on the 1st of December 1947, the ulama al-Azhar call for worldwide Muslim jihad against the Zionist enterprise, which is about to turn into a state in accordance with the United Nations Partition Resolution. Uh, it calls on all Arab males to come and fight, those who can't send some money, etc., etc. Uh, but it, there is this call. Basically, Al-Azhar is telling the Egyptian government, you can't avoid entering this war in Palestine, especially now that the Palestinian Arabs are being crushed by the Israeli forces. And this is in preparation for, and perhaps trying to push the government as well into, the invasion of Palestine by the Arab states, including the Egyptian government. In the Jewish side, you've got a Jewish a Zionist enterprise which turns into a state and on the Arab side you've got a number of different Arab governments as well as before that the Palestinian Arab leadership. The Arab armies do invade because they know the Palestinians are losing the civil war or just about lost the civil war and we have to come to their aid otherwise we will be overthrown by our own people who demand that we intervene. They have to intervene because they've generated enough hatred of Israel in the previous year and two years that they have to send their armies in even if they know their armies are not going to win the war and that's really what happens. Certainly in the Egypt and Syria and Iraq, they don't really believe they're going to win the war. Well, where is anti-Semitism? There is also uh, anti-Americanism. Anti-Americanism and anti-Semitism are a pair, and we have them today, especially with the left. European anti-Americanism anti is paired with, uh, uh, with uh, anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism uh, was, in, in, in the Middle East, was an import from Europe. There was a huge increase of the Islamic diaspora in Germany and also in other parts of Europe, but particularly. And you have every day, almost every day, there are assaults on Jews. Anti-Semitism in Europe is a problem of the Muslim, not our problem. This is a statement by the president of Germany. Among the, the, the migrants who have came, uh, who come, came into the country in the past two, three years, uh, at least 90% are anti-Semite. Uh, so anti-Semitism in the Middle East is normal as eating and drinking. And we have acknowledged this, so I'm, I'm not accusing these people, but I say you have to deal with that. This is a German problem that you are introducing anti-Semites. And Karl Lagerfeld uh, published an article re recently, Frau Merkel, ich hasse sie. You kill six million Jews, and then you, to forgive yourself, you introduce further million anti-Semites into your country. Yeah? What came to be seen now is that many states in the Middle East did realize that what happened in the last decades with many wise people coming from the West was a recipe for disaster. Everybody knows that. So once again, if you would like me actually to talk to Iran, let's make sure that you understand what Iran has in its back mind. Do you know Persian? Do you know Iranian history? Do you understand what is the difference between core and periphery? You can't actually deal with Iran when you are very, very well confined to the idea of who you are. Nobody knows what to do with that. I don't know if Trump knows what to do with that. It's horrible, not because Iran is going to be nuclear, because lunatics are going to get nuclear capacity in their hands. And who knows what they have in mind? Who knows? I'm not saying that they are lunatic the same or they are similar to ISIS. And just think of that. Think of what could have happened if ISIS could get nuclear weapon. Israel has to be proactive. Wherever Iran to be found in Syria, Israel would attack that. You have to put some teeth into that in order to make Iran have a second thought about that. This is the deal. In order to have pure Islam or, or genuine Islam, you have to pursue an agenda of spreading Islam throughout the world. Islam will save humanity and you can't undertake the spread of Islam without power. And you can't have power without political positioning. This remains the, uh, the creed, the slogan, you know, the watchword of the Brotherhood. They this hasn't changed. Al-Turabi would hold conferences in Khartoum of the, the, the jihadist and terrorist organizations, including representatives from Iran, uh, from Hamas, uh, not Hamas, from uh, PLO, to come together so they can, you know, work out strategies together. 
get to know each other. None of us here can imagine, I think, well, maybe some of us can, <laughs> how, how far the reach of the Muslim Brotherhood extends. Anti-Semitism is this global phenomenon. It's not just simply Western, it's everywhere. It's an idea that, that is expressed in most cultures in all sorts of interesting and confusing ways. It's oftentimes actually quite subtle, very subtle. It's never really quite blatant, but it's there repeatedly all the time. People who want to do good or do bad will always, what, take doctrines. And all religious texts have it and interpret those scripts in a particular way. Islamic scriptural texts in the Quran and the Hadith, because they're really new in our sense of modernity, really can be easily appropriated. 